Okay, welcome to our final session of revision in terms of using your assignment questions because today we'll be doing assignment five and then we will be done. And the following week, or not the following week, on Sunday, we can uh, go through the, the mock the mock paper. Maybe we can do session one, the first half, and then session two, the second half. <clears throat> we'll see how how it goes. Okay. Um, like with the previous sessions, since the downloaded. Uh, assessment, the preview of the assessment download sometimes doesn't have all the questions reflecting. We are just going to look for alternative uh, questions from last year's assignment five question. Okay, so without wasting time, let's get to it. You always um, remember or you need to all remember that Assignment five was chi squared and regression, and these are the last two chapters we just did or study units we did. So it should still be fresh in your mind as we go through this. Which one of the following statement is incorrect about the chi squared test of independence? Number A, the alternative hypothesis is that two variables are independent of each other. Number two, the expected frequency for each cell is equal to the row total times the column total divided by the grand total or the sample space or the sample size. C, the test statistic has the row minus one times column minus one degrees of freedom, where R is the number of rows and C is your number of columns. D, the two variables are categorical. And E, if the observed and the expected frequencies for each cell are equal, then the test statistic will be equal to zero. Each one of the following statement is incorrect. Option A. That would be option A because the alternative hypothesis should always state that dependent. they are dependent of each other. So you need to know the properties of chi-square test for independence or chi-square test for contingency table. In a contingency table with the rows five and the columns four, how many degrees of freedoms are there for a chi-square test of independence? Remember? Your degrees of freedom is your number of rows minus one times your number of columns minus one. It's option C. Well, so it would be rows, there are five minus one times columns, there are four minus one. 5 minus 1 is 4 times 4 minus 1 is 3. And the answer is C. C. 
Okay. Because I don't have the information, we're going to skip number three. Probably we will have a question similar to that from the past. Consider the contingency table below to test the independence between distance from home and school level. What is the expected frequency of primary school learner traveling between three kilometers and six kilometers from home to school? Primary and between three and six. What do you need to do first? Choose the correct answer from the list below. So what is it that we need to do here? Total. We need to calculate the total. What is the total for between? Three kilometers and six kilometers. It's 330. 330. Or oh, we can actually do the total for the whole table if you want. Um, what is the total for 115 and 75? 190. And 315 and 165? Uh, 480. And 315. It's 75 plus 120 plus 165 360 640 plus 360 a thousand a thousand so now let's answer this question we need a frequency of um, primary and between, which is the row total multiplied by column total divide by n. What is the row total for primary and B for primary? Is six forty multiplied by the column total of three thirty divided by a thousand. What is the answer? It's B. But the answer is 211.2. Like that? Yes. I don't know uh, whether they would have asked for this. Hold on. Just want to check. Some of these questions are similar to the last year's questions. We can use this one. Given a, given the following two by three contingency table contains the observed frequencies and expected frequencies in bracket from a sample 
of 364 observations. Calculate the high square test statistics required to test the independence of row and the variables. Choose the correct answer. Now, in the exam, in order for you to save time, because there are one, two, three, six, there are six. Remember, the test statistic is calculated by means of the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divide by your expected, right? In the exam, you can use your template. This is a Let's go back to the template. It's a two by three contingency table. So you go to the two by three contingency table. This one comes there. Yeah. Uh, the table can be bigger. And put it right on the corner. So here is our two, two rows, three columns. So all I just need to do, change the values to P and Q. A and B and C. I don't have to worry about the values in the brackets because they will get they will be calculated at the bottom. So I just need to remove all those and put in 55, 40, 79, from 34, 56. Right. And you will see that okay, we need to put it to two decimal so that it looks exactly the same as the rest of them. You can see that these values are the same as the values that are on here. If I put them to two decimals, all of them, they will be the same. So given this information, they just want you to calculate the test statistic. And the test statistic is just the value here at the bottom, which is 9.40, which is option D. So you can use the template. Remember, it's an open book. So you can use a template for your question. But we need to know how to use the template. If you are not using the template, then you're going to calculate. You need to have patience and work faster because you will need to say 55 minus 45.54. Take the square of that. Divide everything by 45.54 plus, and you go and do 40. Minus 45.89, and you take the square and you divide by 45.89 plus until you do all the values up until you get to 100 minus 93.43 squared divide by. 93.43 and the answer when you're done it should give you the same as 9.40 but please so on this question that we have we can do the same to answer this we can Can do the same instead of using the 55, we can use 75. Let's just remove all of them. 
48, 72, 50, 50, 58, and 41. And the answer is 6.3 on the data that we have. And that's how you will do the calculations. Okay, now this one, same as what we had previously, they told us that in question five, you would have answered the same question like this. Um, and uh, they they already calculated your test statistics, so you don't have to go and calculate it again. And they are telling you that uh, if alpha of 10%, which one of the following statement about the conclusion will be correct? So what you need to do, because the decision, let's start there, the decision that you need to make is based on if your test statistics, if it's greater than your critical value, then you reject the null hypothesis. That is the rule. That is the decision rule. So we need to go find the critical value. Now, finding the critical value, your critical value will be alpha and the degrees of freedom. So what is our degrees of freedom? The rho minus one times column minus one. So how many rows do we have? We only have two rows. How many columns do we have? One, two, three columns. And that will be two minus one is one. Three minus one is two. One times two is two. So we do have our degrees of freedom. So we need to go find of zero comma one zero and the degrees of freedom of two. For sure, I didn't do is stop sharing because I don't want you to see my entire laptop. So I scroll and go find the table. You need, when you go write the exam, right? Please make sure that you have everything you need in front of you because you won't have the chance to stand up and move around and go somewhere. Make sure you have two pens, two pencils, a ruler, whatever you will need, a working calculator, papers, everything. You can only stand up once you're done with one session. Okay, so it's open. I'm just gonna share again my entire screen. So that then we can kick off. Okay, so now we need to go to chi squared tests, critical values of chi, and there is critical values of chi. We need the alpha value and two where they both meet. So your critical value is. 4,605. So 4,605. What we got right. Now we need to make a decision based on that. So our test statistic is 1,57. So if we're going to make a decision, you can also, for a chi square test, you can also draw for yourself. Uh, because the chi squared actually it is a left skew test, if you don't know. It's a right skew test, sorry. So it means 
uh, if you don't know how chi square tests look, it will be like this. So there is where you go. It always your critical value will be on the upper side. It's always a one tail and one tail. But it, it is a two tail test, but for um, decision, we only use one tail. So, yeah. I'm just going to draw it like that. I'm not good with drawings. So bear with me as I try to draw. Your critical value was 4,605. Anything that falls in the shaded area, we reject the null hypothesis. So our 1.56 falls in there, do not reject. So therefore we do not reject the null hypothesis. I'm already giving you the answers. Okay, which one of the statements are we it's correct? So we're looking for the correct statement. I've already given you some of the things that you need. Okay, so let's see. Statement number one says we do not reject the null hypothesis. And we can conclude that the distance from school and school level are independent of each other. Number B, we do not reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the distance from school and school level are not independent of each other. Number C, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the distance from school and school level are independent of each other. Number D, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the distance from school and school level are independent. Number E, the alternative hypothesis that the distance from school and school level are independent of each other. A, B, C, D, O, E. Your H naught says independent and H A says yeah. so which one of these statements will be correct? I've already gave you the hint in terms of how you get to the answer. I've given you partial answer, so which one? I and think the answer, the answer is A. between A and B. Ah, ah. It's A. It's A. <laughs> I thought it's B. Ah. Okay. A or B? A. 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 Because okay. we're not rejecting the null hypothesis, therefore it means the the distance from school and school level they are independent. Independent. Yes. It's A. Okay. Let me see if we do have, so now we're moving into the regression. If we do have a question like this, I know that we should have a question similar to that. There we go. I already gave you the answer. If, if you were so quick to look at the options, you should know which one is the answer. Which one of the following statement is incorrect about some of the concepts of senior of Simple linear regression. Let me put it this way because it's going to be different. It look and feel. So we're looking for the incorrect. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that it's looking for the incorrect statement. Okay. So number A. The least square method estimates the regression equation by maximizing the error of 
the sum square, uh, which is the SSE. Number B, the coefficient of determination gives an indication of how well the estimated regression equation fits the data. Number C, the coefficient of determination takes a value between 0 and 1. Number D, the correlation coefficient takes on values between negative 1 and 1. E, the correlation coefficient takes on the sign of the slope of the estimated regression. A, B, C, D, E. Which one? Is it A or is it B? Because uh, C is correct because the coefficient of determination is R squared. So it will be, it can never be negative. D is correct because we know that it can be negative or positive. And the slope and the coefficient of correlation are also the same sign. So you can have the coefficient of correlation, different the sign being different from the slope. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So if this is correct and this is correct and this is correct, therefore it leaves us with the two statements. Do you know how to interpret the coefficient of determination? Remember, the coefficient of correlation tells you the strength and the direction, right? And we can say things are positively correlated or negatively correlated. What about the coefficient of determination? It has everything to do with total variation or the variation in your dependent variables. Independent variables can be attributed by the variation in your dependent variable. So the only incorrect statement here is B. The least square method um, uh, estimates the equation by minimizing the errors of the sum squares. Because in terms of, if you can remember, your y hat is equals to b0 plus b1 and plus errors. But we normally, because we want, we try to minimize those errors, hence it's not always included in your, in your equation because of that. So number A, would have been correct. What? Oh, probably what? 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 But number B is the one that number A is the one that is not correct. The least square method regression equation. That statement is correct. Estimate by minimizing the errors. This is correct. Probably on this question, they had an error uh, with this question. 
as should be B. As this statement is correct. Moving on, which is different to the question that we had here. As you can see, we're looking for the incorrect statement, and you can see that B is correct because this statement is correct. Uh, a correlation coefficient of 0, 0,1 will indicate a negative correlation. C says the correlation coefficient takes a value between 0 and 1. We know that it takes a value between negative 1 and 1. So that is correct. That is correct. The coefficient of determination can be interpreted as the total or as the percentage of the total sum squares that can be explained by using the estimated regression line, and that is also correct. The slope and the intercept of the estimated regression line are estimated using the least square method. Yes, because that is the equation of yb is equals to b0 plus b b1x. So the only one that is incorrect is that. And you can see on this side, they actually even got it as correct, but when it comes to this question, they stop them around. I don't know why, probably. I don't know. Okay, because this, I don't have all the values at the top. We can use last year's one. Um, it might be that we won't find the answer on this one as well. I think there was an error somehow. Okay, so given the, consider the sample data below and develop a scatter plot, which one of the, uh, which one of scatter plot A to F best describe the data. So you can select two points and come and look at the, and select which one will best represent the data. I can't make the screen bigger. So if I choose 23 and 25, I need to make sure that if I'm on 20, if I'm on 20, on the X axis, the value of the X axis should correspond with the value of the Y axis at 24. And I can see that we do have this point which represent that we can use the method of elimination. So here I am on 23, it's somewhere here, and, 20, and this graph as well doesn't start at 25. It starts at 30, so this is incorrect. You can use that method of elimination as well like that. Um, okay, and moving to this one. We have 23 should be somewhere here and 20, 25 should be somewhere here. Unless this point is on 25. If I draw a line like that, maybe because of my shaky hands, do you think that dot is on top of 25? No, it looks like it's above. It looks like it's above. We can put the question mark on that one. Let's do another process of elimination on this one. So we know that 23 will be somewhere, somewhere there uh, because that is 30 and 25. And we can see that 25 is above. So this can we can eliminate as well. Coming on this side, 23 can be somewhere here. And 25 will be somewhere there. So this also will not fit the data because I'm looking at 23 and 25, right? On this one, there is no 25 there, so it cannot be. So between plot A and D, let's give that one a benefit of a doubt. So let's go to 30, 32 and 31. So if I'm on 32, should be somewhere, somewhere here, right? And there are no points. 32 
and 31. So I can give that one a benefit of a doubt and say that is 32 and 31. And so this will be not be correct. So I already eliminated all of them except a. So the correct plot should be a. Let's see. Oh, uh, so the correct plot is plot A. So coming to the answers, uh, we say it's plot A. Where is plot A? Plot A is on E. Plot A is E. Yay, that's correct. That's plot A. That's how if you get a question like this in the exam, you just use the process of elimination and get over and done with that. Um, so in, uh, especially like if you look at the, the answers here, you can see that your y-axis has 17 as the, or oh, 22 as the highest. This goes up until 30. Any value above 22, so 22 is here on the y-axis, right? So it means this graph already, I can look at the y-axis, which is, has 22, and I can apply the method of elimination from there. So this graph doesn't have any value linking to 22 and below, because there is 8 we don't have on this one. Uh, 22 at least it allows, so we can still use that. This one doesn't even start at... A zero, so we can also exclude that one. And this one starts at zero, it starts at zero. And we can do a process of elimination like that. But the challenge with this, because I don't have the X value, so I don't know what this point corresponds with. I can find the Y values. So uh, here it says a Y value should be at least 30. We don't have any Y value that is more than 22, so that one can go. Uh, so already we eliminated three. Uh, let's see. We need a Y value of 22. And a Y value of 22 is there. A Y value of 17 is there. So they should be 1, 2, 3, 17. 1, 2, 3, 17. And they should be... Two thirteens, so there are two thirteens. So I'm going to go with E at this point because looking at this, there should be three seventeens. There is nothing there, right? So this is also not. There should be three seventeens. Uh, if if these are seventeen, then they will be correct. But there should be two thirteens. If those are two thirteens, then it's correct. They should be two tenths. Then I don't have the tenths because then I've already used my two thirteen. So this won't be correct. So plot E on this question should have been the correct one. So E is on E and you can see there. Even though I didn't have the X value, I can still make out on the plot by thinking how to do a process of elimination on this. Okay, so going on to the next question. So this one talks about the reading age. There should be another question like that. And that is the question, so we can use this one. You are tasked with investigating the relationship between the reading speed Y and HX of a primary and high school learners. Using simple linear regression, which one of the following statements about the investigation is incorrect? So we're looking for the incorrect answer here. Yeah. A. The dependent variable is H. Always remember X is in the independent and Y is your D. 
dependent. So, a the age variable is it's a dependent variable. B the estimated regression equation will take a form of reading speed is equals to B1 times H plus B0, where B1 is your slope, mm -hmm. B0 is your intercept mm -hmm. for the estimated regression equation. Number C, the reading speed is a quantitative discrete variable. Mm -hmm. I've already gave you the answer because I'm showing you the answer on this question. If the correlation coefficient is negative, then there is a negative linear relationship between reading speed and age. And the answer here would be age is a dependent variable. Let's go back to your questions from your assignment which is almost exactly the same as what you, we went through. So if we are looking for the incorrect statement, Okay, so we're looking for the incorrect statement. Uh, probably the same statement that reads would have read like this. So we know that Y is your dependent variable. So on your question, they say your Y variable, which is the reading speed, is independent. So that's what would be incorrect. Age is continuous. The coefficient of correlation is positive, then for it means that there is a positive linear relationship, and this is the regression line. Okay. This is another question. Consider the data following the number of Oh, following the age in yes and the reading speed in words per minute of learners at Kiba Middle School in Kamopeid. Which one of the following or which one of the calculated quantities is incorrect? You can use a, the template to do this. So remember, we do have this template so now because this template doesn't look exactly like the template you have or the the values you have on there you need to know what is happening on on yet in order for you to be able to answer your questions so let's put it this way Just want only this value. In this, uh, A is the sum of X. Sum of X is the total. Is the total. At the bottom where it has the color shaded, it's where you calculate the summation or your total. So the sum of X is adding all the X values. The sum of X observation minus the mean squared. I have it here. It is that color. So this is. Let's change the color. When I use red, this is the sum of your X observation minus your mean. No, it's not. It is not because this is the sum of X and Y. Sorry, my bad. We're looking for the sum of X I minus the mean. X I minus the mean squared, right? It is this one. It is the sum 
of your x minus the mean squared. That is that column. This one, C, the sum of x minus the mean times this uh, y minus the mean, it is this one. The sum of x minus the mean x times y minus mean of y, it is that column. Uh, so the data that I have on here is the same as the data that we have there, and I'm able to see that the correct answers. The slope, remember, once you have put in your data, it also do the calculation on here. Our slope, which is B1, it's your slope. If you don't know what slope, I do have this information at the end to tell you what you are calculating. So the slope is B1. And, oh, sorry, this is the intercept B0. Intercept B0, it's minus 1.49. And B1, it's 18.9, if you round it off to two decimal. So the incorrect, the incorrect statement would be D. And this probably is this, hence I still have the data on the template. It would have been the same as last year's one. Okay, cool. Happiness? Yes, thank you. Then this one is cut off. Don't worry. I'm sorry. Do you mind if I ask a question? Yes, you can. Is it so based on the, the one that we just went through? Uh, it's a, a different question based on okay. the exam itself. Is that fine? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, you have mentioned in the WhatsApp group that we are allowed to use resources. Does that include the template? Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to not answer that at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll stay okay. a little bit longer. Okay. Sure. Cool. So let's do... Let's do the, I think probably it's the same. Yes, it is the same. The following regression equation estimates the reading speed y of learners at Zika, uh, Zakias Malaza Secondary School in Emalatlani as a function of their HX. And this is their regression line. Y is equals to 10.4x plus 107.9. Calculate the estimated reading speed for 15-year Lena. So easy, right? Because they gave you 15, you just substitute where you see x, you put 15. So this is your x. Do the calculation. And let me know what is 10.4 times 15 plus 7.9. This 3.9. Mm -hmm. I got 263.9, which is, is the same as 264. 263.9, and you can just round it off to 264, and that would be A. Okay, let's go back to your assignment. So, okay. On your assignment, the reading speed 
estimated regression equation for the learners at Mount View Secondary School is your reading speed of 20.2 times the age minus 60.5 with the correlation coefficient of 0, 0,97. Uh, Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Okay, so the coefficient of determination is R squared. So you need to calculate R squared. So therefore you need to calculate 0, 0,97 squared because it is R squared. And if it's 94, then that statement should be correct. Number B, a one year Increase in learners age, increase in the reading speed. With the sign in front tells you the sign. If it's negative, it's a decrease. If it's positive, it will be an increase. Number C. So the sign in front of the slope or yeah, probably the sign in front of the slope. Let's not use the coefficient of correlation because we're not talking about that. Number C, an 18 year old learner is expected to have a reading speed of that. So where you see H, you put the 18 year and solve the equation. So why? This is the reading speed. So your answer should be 20.2 times 18 minus 60.5. And that should give you, if it gives you that, then it's the answer. Number D, look at the coefficient of correlation and say the direction and the strength. So the strength and the direction of that relationship, does it reflect that? Which one of the following statement is incorrect? A, B, C, or D? It's B. Incorrect. Did you calculate all of them? Uh, C is correct. D is correct. No, I did not calculate R squared. A is also correct. A is correct. Therefore, it's got to be B, right? Let's say, let's yeah, say yes, 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 because if you look at, oh, yes, I didn't read all of it. Uh, this is the problem, yeah, the, hence why it is incorrect. Uh, so this is correct, that is correct, that is correct. This would have been correct if they used 20 point, because this is the definition of the slope, and the slope is this value here. This is the intercept. And because they use the intercept there, it should be 20.2. So a one year increase in the learner's age increases the reading speed by 20.2. Should be like that. So the incorrect statement here is B. I don't know why. So when you calculated the eight, the 18 year old onto this, you do get 303, right? Yeah. 
the next, I think this is the last question. Given the data, I don't know whether they were asking you to calculate what, let's see. Okay, consider the observed and predicted reading speed for the school. Use the given equation to calculate your sum square due to error and choose the correct answer. So you need to be calculating SSSSE. In the exam, they will not give you a big table like this, right? Or big numbers like this, because they want to make sure that you have enough time. Okay, so, because this was part of the assignment, at the bottom of this template, there are some square measures right there. So they are asking you to calculate this. Now, calculating this, it means you will need to change these values because it uses the mean of Y and the mean of Y is calculated right here at the top. So it means you will have to also calculate or change the data set there so that you can have this mean of Y because in this formula, Let's go back to the formula. If we click, double click on the formula, you will see that it uses, oh, doesn't use the mean, it uses what? Wait, let's look at the formula. Let's so make a copy of this. We need to make sure that. Oh, it uses the estimate. So it's your observed minus your estimated values. So now, but you will still need to use, you will still need to use the top part because it uses the regression line to estimate every value. So I need to have these values in order for us to calculate the estimates. The estimate, these values here, so if I double click on this, it should give us the formula. So you can see that it goes and it takes the value of your regression line. If we go back, go up, you will see that it takes those two values there, right? So it means the top part needs to also be replaced. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten values. And I have ten values. So it's I can still use the template as it is. It's just replacing the values. So it's gonna take long. I hope you are also doing it on your site. On your template seven, eight. I'm just gonna do the one line first to 74. You will look at my data and tell me if I'm putting it in wrong because I'm not watching what I do. I'm looking at the keyboard. So I'm on six and two forty-six and one sixty-eight. Hope I captured everything correctly. Then do the next one, which is a little bit tricky. 180.36271.28 and 180.1. Lizzie, I'm not doing it right now. I think you need to use commas and not full stops. Because I'm, yeah, I have it 271.28. Lizzie, mm -hmm. I think you need to use commas in your in your um, numbers, not the full stop, not a not point. Not the full stop. Mm. 
Thank you. Yeah. Okay, it's my setting on my laptop. Um, yeah, I think I've changed my English. My yeah, it's using the US. I must change my settings. I will change them. So one sixty-two, and oh, I changed it to South Africa. I think I'm not sure. Thirty six one ninety eight point five four and two thirty four point nine one two one six point. Sorry, Lisa, uh, no, Lily jumped. Did I miss something? Are they two ninety eight? Yeah, yes, it's yeah, fine. I'll copy this. One nine eight point four one six point seven three. There are two of them, right? Six point seven three. If I was a second party of any company, they would have fired me a long time because I'll take forever to, to type. I can't type faster. Okay, so I'm just going to copy the same information here, the X and Y, and paste them right here at the bottom. And the values change. And I must just double check this value. It is the sum of all of them. So we can answer our question. So let's go to the options. These are our options. So let's go there. I don't have the answers. Did I capture everything correctly? I think what happened was that you captured the values perfectly fine, but that's not the X and Y values that you're actually supposed to be using. Because I have from when I did the assignment, I still have the document the same way, and my X values are like below 20. All of the all the values are like below uh, 20, and all the Y values are the ones from the. Um, if you scroll up a little bit on your document on the left. Yeah. So all the values you currently have in, in the X column, right? The, yeah. I have all of those in the Y column. And in my X column, I have different values to yours, right? Like, And then I actually have the answer as well um, that I can see from the document as well, that 2633 on D. I have that value uh, listed in my sum of error, sum of squared error. Wait, let's go back there. Sure. So I think so, what happens is you don't have the, the values that you're missing a few, but I don't think you have them available to you either. I don't have all the values. Uh, so those values with the, with the decimal places, I don't think you need them for your No, this, this values in the, with the decimal value, this, you sure. need them on here because the, the formula here is Remember the formula here is the sum of your Y observation, which is your original observation minus your estimated observation, which are this estimated observation using your regression line. So let me just double check my regression line. So using your regression estimate. So I must use those two values. Wait, something is not... Oh, yeah, it is correct because it's using the B1 and the B0. And you estimate, I just want to go back there. Uh, and this is just, I just need to double check all the values that they do, what they're supposed to be doing. I just need to remove this. Okay. So this is. I want to double click inside. 
uh, it should be your y value minus your estimated value squared, right? So it does that for each and every one of them. Just want to make sure. It should be. Um, is the problem now? This. this. Okay. I'm sure this value they didn't make a mistake here too. So what are the titles of the columns? The X and the Y columns that you're currently using on the on the assignment. There. Uh, so the assignment. Lizzie, the, I think we need to swap it around. Is it I my think phone? the value that you have. Yeah, no, no, no. I think the values that you have on the Y is supposed to be on the X side and the values that you have on the X side is supposed to be on the Y because I also had a similar problem when I did my assignment. When I swapped the figures around, then it gave oh. me the answer. Okay. Okay. Oh, you know what? Because now I'm doing something very totally different. No, no, no. We're not swapping anything around. It is they've given us the predicted values so these are not the y values sorry my bad uh so on the formula this formula okay right on this formula this is your y and this is your y hat that's what they gave us should be like that so on here we should be using this value minus, actually, I should not change the, go back there. Sorry, my bad. Now I see what you mean. So we should be saying our y value minus our y hat value because they gave us your y value and your y hat value there. So we just change the template yeah, a little bit. And it should give us two six six three. There you go. Which is that value. So what they gave us is not x and y, is the predicted value and your reading speed. So they you just substitute the sum of the formula is yes. Yeah. See, sometimes you, when you use this, it's the sum of your y value minus your estimated value squared. So you just take this value minus that, square the answer, and do the rest and add them together should be it and this should be the same as what you have on here so on this one because the data is different you do the same it is s s e it will be the sum of your y minus your y hat squared they gave you your y and your y hat you just calculate. And that's it. That completes today's session. Are there any comments or questions with regards to the assignment? If not, then I'm going to stop the recording.